Hello everyone, I'm Bolt Matrix and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at yet another space set from the good folks at SirToys.com. This is the Space Morphers China Aerospace Museum set from the Magic Classroom. These are the same folks that make the satellite set that we took a look at last week. And yeah, it's a completely different set. Now, all of these figures are five different figures that transform into robot modes, and then of course they combine. Before we get into it, these figures do come with some weapons. There are four weapons here, and then there's another weapon on the back of the satellite dish. I have not been able to figure out how to attach these to any of the vehicle modes. First up in the set, and what I am assuming is the leader of the group, is this microwave dish that doesn't move independently. At least I don't think so. It doesn't have thrusters on its back like some of the others. It does have the ability to hold its weapon on its backpack, so we'll just pull that off for now. And yeah, it's a stationary satellite dish. Kind of feels like mainframe from the Transformers, or a blaster, or sound wave. It works fine as a satellite dish, or a satellite relay. So I guess this one falls on the planet and works in conjunction with the satellite and the rover. It's fine. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. It's just weird that the other four all move independently, except this one. Transformation for this figure starts with grabbing the arm sections and then folding the shoulders in together and then kind of grabbing the arms and pulling them away from the body and pulling them to the front. Grab the entire bottom section and pull it away from the body to expose the legs and then split the legs apart. And as soon as you do that, the back of the well, satellite mode or satellite dish mode collapses and there are its arms and legs. The one issue I have in robot mode with this guy is that his legs kind of have a tendency to clap inwards. Not a big deal. Now for the head reveal. First, take the tops of the satellite dish and unpeg them from the rest and then flip them up and out of the way like this. I like to just unpeg them, fold them up and around, and then just point them directly off the back of the figure, like so. Then this front bit will fall down. This whole front section, this whole bottom of the satellite dish, is die-cast metal. Take the actual antenna in the middle and fold it in, and then that will collapse like that. Then come to the center and flip up the chest and the head, push the head a little bit forward, fold the satellite dish up, and that whole section the collapsed should fold up underneath the robot head. Doesn't do so perfectly, but a little bit of futzing will get it to move back there just fine. And here we have the robot mode. Works pretty darn well, and it definitely feels like a transformer. That shiny chest is quite nice. And the head sculpt is also quite nice. Has a slight Ultra Magnus vibe to it. The figure works really well. It's a great size, and I do like it a lot. Posability is a little bit on the weird side, though. No head articulation, except for falling forward for the transformation. And then the arms are on ball joints that are very tight. Then there are swivels at just above the ratcheting elbows. But if you ratchet the arms up all the way, he can't hold his weapon. There's not enough clearance. Torso swivel slightly because of this big backpack chunk. Legs can ratchet forward and back and in and out and then collapse at the knee. There is thigh swivel and then there's no foot articulation whatsoever. And then the knees. Technically, they're supposed to bend. I cannot get the knees on my figure to bend. There, there are knees. Those are ratcheted. They are so tight, I cannot get them to bend. Oh, well. Overall, it's a good first start. Next up is the Heavy Rocket. This is the rocket, or modeled after the giant satellite launching rocket that the Chinese government uses. It's pretty good. It's got a good weight to it. It's got some die-cast metal on the edges here, or specifically on this piece right here. Nowhere else, just this piece. Transformation is interesting. Grab the rocket and pull the whole thing apart like that, and then the bottom section will form the robot legs, so split them apart, and then reach inside for these panels, and they will open up, and then you hinge the legs out and close up the panels. We'll do that on both sides. Then take the outside and collapse it outwards like that, and then come to the very bottom and flip down these little sections by the thrusters to form the toes, and uh, 
that's the legs. For the upper torso, grab the top of the rocket and split it in half and then fold those sections out and down. Turn the areas around. Just be careful. These pits right here do break off. We will need that for the for the combined mode later. Then take the die cast piece, flip it down, slide the head up, and then close that whole section up. Then we can fold the arms up. And then the, well, arms will fold that. Ah, dang it. See, they pop off very easily. So we want to turn that around, turn that. There is a door right here. Damn it, I keep breaking that door off. There is a door right there that opens up. Let's try that again. There is a door here that opens up. And then what you're supposed to do is collapse the arm into it and snap it into place like that, and then fold that out. Then flip down this section for the fists to appear, and then just kind of line it up. And there we have an arm. So we will repeat the process on the other side. Get that straightened out, reach in and flip that door open, collapse the upper arm, fold the hand up, or fold the hand in, and then drop the whole section down, and push the head back up because it has a tendency to fall down if this isn't pegged in correctly. And there we go. The robot mode we end up with looks pretty darn cool. I really like it. It works incredibly well. And the head sculpt is very much a pilot's face mask. I like it. The overall aesthetic of this robot mode kind of reminds me of Jetfire. Not going to lie about that. The only thing I really don't like about the robot mode is the shoulders do not stay real well. They have a tendency to slide up like that. You have to push them down. And even then, they don't stay in real well. It's just a a flaw, I guess. But it's a clean robot mode, and once you figure out the transformation, even with the directions, it looks good. Now, posability-wise, it's a little less good than the first one. Head is on a swivel, so it can move this time. Shoulders do swivel and hinge in and out. There is technically an elbow, but depending on how you have the actual arms pegged in, which I actually I have them backwards, so... Yeah, there are elbows there. But a quick jump cut later, you can see I have fixed that. I just swapped, I just popped the shoulder bits off and swapped them around. So now we have the arms pointing in the correct directions with correct posability. Oh, and I forgot, you can also swivel this way. No fist articulation except for um, that. There is no torso articulation, but the legs can kick, kick forward, can kick out to the side. There is swivel. And then again... There is a bend at the knee, but it's just oh my God, so tight that uh, I'm afraid I'm going to break the dang thing. All right, two down, three to go. And next up is the satellite, and it's kind of my favorite one just in terms of looks. It looks like it's supposed to go in space, and it looks like it's supposed to be out there for a while. And honestly, it holds together the best out of the three. Transformation for this is very easy. Grab the section and pull it down. Oh, and yes, there is die cast in this on the back of the satellite dish and on the top of the satellite dish right there. And then pull the legs apart and they do snap apart, really? And then fold the actually solar collectors in and they will peg into the backs of the legs on those little peg, those little pegs sticking up. And that I greatly appreciate. The shins collapse, and then, yeah, that's it. That's the feet, which you can extend out like that. And you're supposed to put them out like that. Then come to the top and grab the blue part and pull it out. And these sections will rotate out to form the arms. And he even has his, or it, has its own little gun in here that is really hard to get out if you don't have nails. And then reach inside and flip out the very Grimlock-esque head. I think the coloring works incredibly well on this one. I love the silver on the shins that matches the silver on the chest. And then look, the figure, it looks like it has claws over its hands. And then the head sculpt, which is vaguely Grimlock-esque. It's just odd. But of the three robots thus far, this is the most robotic of the, ult or of the robot modes. It 
it's not clear what it's supposed to be, or I should say it's the most generic of the robot modes. Posability wise head is on a ball joint this time, then swivel joint in the shoulder, and then another swivel underneath that, and then a swivel and a hinge above, above that. But every time I move it, I pop the swivel, and then the hands don't articulate, torso articulation, legs forward and back in and out on ratchets. And then the legs themselves have thigh swivels, bends at the knees that aren't that tight, but only has a few positions. And then the foot feet, the feet have in and out articulation, but no forward and back, which is a shame. But yeah, I kind of like this one. It just, it's the most generic con of all of them. So far, three down, two more to go. We're still looking pretty darn good. Next up is the Rover. Now, the Rover is the only land-based one, other than, or I should say mobile land-based one. It has solar collectors on the inside. I wish these were painted. That would be neat. If they were painted blue, that would work with the rest of the set. And then it's got this little satellite dish that can only look forward. I kind of wish it could go back a little farther. All of this can fold up into a nice compact package that works really well. I think this is neat. Now, of all of them, this has the absolute most complex transformation. You actually want to come to the back and lift up a bit, and that will allow you to unpeg these sides. And then you can come in and fold out the wheels, thus freeing up the entire rear of the alt mode to hinge out and then you can open up the base and this will allow you to unhinge or I should say hinge up the legs. And then this whole section will close up, but not before we split them apart and fold down the toes like that. And now we could close them up and lock the knees into place. If you don't do that, things get a little squirrely. Fold the legs up and then take the legs and turn them 180 degrees at the thigh swivel. And then this whole section is supposed to hinge forward and the crotch or just the belly button, I should say, is supposed to peg into this section up here. And um, yeah, it technically kind of does that, but not real well. And then we have a, well, if that's not a Gerwalk mode, I don't know what is. Now this is where things get a little complicated, but not too bad. Unpeg the front of this mode and this whole section will hinge out. And we just want to hinge it out enough so that we can actually grab the solar collectors, flip them up all the way, and then turn them around 180 degrees. That will then allow us to fold up the antenna and fold that section open and flip up the head and then close that section up underneath the head. And then we could take the arm sections, fold them down and fold them out to flip the, <laughs> the rover wheels behind the arms and then fold the shoulders down. So we'll do that on the other side, flip out the arms, Fold them down, fold the shoulders down, and up oh, there, 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 there went that piece again. So we have to get that back up and get that snapped into place. And it's supposed to peg into place down there and in a piece in the back, but it just don't. So it comes apart very easily and frustratingly so. So I just try to get that in place, get the figure stood up, and get it posed while cursing every time I move it because it pops apart. Before we get take a look at the robot mode, you push the arms in to latch them into place. In robot mode, this is the only figure that is primarily gray and black. All the other ones have white, black, red, and blue in them. This guy is not like the others. I do love the head sculpt, though. It has a very Hunt for the Decepticons stockade feel to it. It's really unique and interesting. And I forgot you're supposed to be able to flip up this horn. And none of the other ones have a, have a head crest, just this guy. Honestly, posability, I'm not even going to bother because every time I pose him, he comes apart. He has the same amount of posability as the others in terms of joints, but there is so much kibble, especially on the arms, that things just get in the way. It's not a bad figure. It just things get in the way when you try to move them around. All right, four down, one more to go. And last but by no means least is the space shuttle. Now, all of you who are uh, young 
might not know what the space shuttle is. Well, the space shuttle was the main mode of getting into space for NASA, aka the United States Space Force or Space Agency. It's from like the late 70s, early 80s until just a few years ago. The Enterprise, the Challenger, the Columbia, there were several space shuttles. Definitely looks like Skylinks. Anyway, transformation-wise, to start off with, come to the bottom and open up those panels. That will allow you to disconnect the section in the middle and fold out the legs. And then you close these panels up and they will pick into place. Spool the legs apart and then take the front nose cone and fold that in, turn them around to give you some toes. Now for the rest of the space shuttle, take the entire middle section and push it down to fold it down. Then this silver bit will fold up and become the belly button like that. Then fold the wings down a little bit, come into the inside and you can see where this is going. We'll grab the arms and fold them out. And then this whole section will flip up and should slide past this midsection to be able to come down and get pegged into place like that. And then we could flip open the tail wing for a nice chest decoration. Take the thrusters, unpeg them, and just kind of fold them out to the back. Reach inside and pull up the head. And really, you do need some nails for this. I just trimmed my nails. Ow, that hurts. And then fold the wings back and extend the arms and flip out the hands. In terms of robot mode, this is probably my favorite and feels more like a good transformer than any of the other figures. I'm not sure who that head sculpt reminds me of. It Definitely feels like a generic Decepticon, though. The only thing I don't like about this mode is that this thing hanging off the back. I would love it if it could fold down or if there was another bigger hinge that could have fold flat onto the back as opposed to just sticking off the back like that. That's as far down as it could fold. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I could hinge it down more. No. In fact, the directions have you do this, which looks so much worse, but... Anywho, head is on a swivel that can move side to side. Shoulders are on hinges and swivels and swivels and hinges, no hand articulation. And this figure is meant to hold both of the cannons, but they're too big in vehicle mode. Torso articulation, not present. Legs can kick forward and back, in and out, thigh swivel, bend at the knee that actually works with this figure as opposed to the others. And then ball joints in the feet that are super tight. Probably the most poseable of the set, and I think looks the best, could use a little bit of red paint, but we've got some red there in the chest. Overall, I like the set. I think the set is a ton of fun. Yeah, the transformations are a little bit on the simplistic side, but there's nothing wrong with that. And the fact that the Rover is the most complicated one is a little weird. The only thing I think that is bad about the set is the Rover. I mean, that thing sticks out like a sore thumb compared to all the others. That's just me being picky. In terms of scale, these guys are a little bit bigger than the current Voyager class series, but they are a little bit smaller than the current Leader class series. I think a better scale would be the Titans Returns Blitzwing and Octane figures, because as you can see, they're roughly the same size as Titans Returns Blitzwing. And now we're going to get into the combination for these five. To start off with, we're going with the, with the leader of the group. Who, okay, who I'm assuming is the leader of the group. And we're going to first kind of transform him back into the alt mode, sort of. So to start off with, we're going to pull the chest forward, flip the head down, and then grab on the inside and flip the combiner head up. But sometimes this thing gets stuck and you got to just pull it up. And there's the combiner head, and then we could take the chest piece that we had before and just smush that up under there. Then take the arms and return them to the way they were and flip them back. So once we've got the legs turned back, once we've got the arms flipped back, flip out the black pieces as well, make sure they're flush. Then take the leg and flip it around, and we will fold it up. There are these tab holes on the inside of the legs that will tab into the blue sections on the shoulders. And just getting this lined up is a pain in the butt. I just I cannot overemphasize that. 
because not only that, this peg on the outside of the forearm needs to also peg in to this little tiny slot on the inside of the leg. And just getting everything lined up is a pain, but it is doable. All right, once we've got this torso component, come to the back and fold in those back panels again, and then grab the backpack and flip it down, and kind of wedge it between the fingers, and then we've got its crotch. And then we can come back and flip these black panels out again. And then, remember the gun? Well, we want to make the gun like a tuning fork, like so, and that will peg up inside the abdomen, thus filling in the gaps. And what I like to do is take the satellite dish sections and just fold them out like that to make little Omega Supreme wings. All right, we got the torso ready to go. Whoops, slippery little bugger. Let's go ahead and get some limbs. So let's form some feet and legs. <clears throat> to start off with the rover, sort of return it to vehicle mode. Not all the way though. Leave the legs, ah, shoot, leave the legs out. And yes, believe it or not, getting the head to fold up into the cavity there is a lot harder than it needs to be. All right, with the head down, we can then flip the backpack around and pull out the arms, fold them in like that. And what we're going to do is pretty much sort of return it to alt mode halfway if that makes sense. So we'll get it to this point. And then once you've got the top of the alt mode done, you will, well, almost done. We have to fold these panels down to snap everything in place because that will hold the robot hips, that black piece in place. Then take the legs, turn them around so you can, can then combine them up like that. And we're just about done. We just need one of these guns to flip up and then find where to peg it in. Oh, that's because I have it upside down. And one of these guns will become the foot, like, like that. And then the leg itself will turn. So that combiner port will then peg into the torso. So we have a leg. Next for our spaceship, we'll fold up the chest, fold down the head, fold that section up, transform the arms back into the vehicle mode, like that, and then fix the torso back into the way it was for the vehicle mode. Oh, we have to grab the silver bit, and the silver bit is the hardest part of the figure to transform, because it doesn't want to always... Co it always doesn't want to cooperate. Fold the arms in and then return the toes back to the way they were. Leave the legs extended, combine those up. So once we have everything snapped together, fold the wings back and I goofed. I keep forgetting that you have to open this because those peg holes are what the foot peg into. So then that will peg in like that. And here we have the legs, and they combine via this little peg on either side. There we go, legs. And now for some arms to start off with and fold the arms up, fold the head down like that, collapse these over. And then for the feet, just combine them up you're not actually going to collapse them, but you will combine them up like you were going to form that satellite mode. And then one of the guns will fold out into a hand. And like the Combiner Wars hands, they have thumbs on either side. So it doesn't matter which one you use, which is cool. And then turn that, and there we've got one arm. Now for the rocket ship. We will sort of return him to alt mode. First, we will pull off his shoulders. Remember those shoulders I told you that come off real easy? Well, go ahead and pull them off. Then unpeg, whoop, unpeg that, and flip it around like so. 
and then combine the legs, whoop, before you combine the legs, fold the toes up, and get that gun and peg it in here on the bottom, and then collapse or close up this pan this set of panels. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just got to find out which side we want to have bend at the knees, which, again, remember, these things, their knees don't bend all that well. Now, what are we going to do with the arms? Well, we will simply return them back into their pre-transformed state as the nose cone of the rocket, and then do that for both sides. Once you've got the nose cone all done, grab your giant robot, and there are two peg holes just above his keister, and there are two pegs right there on the back of the, ro of the rocket, and they peg in right there. So he literally has a rocket booster sticking off his butt. And then to attach the arms, we flip out these plastic pins and use those to combine. And they snap right in. It is a little bit better if you come in at an angle because, well, as you can see, sometimes it's a little bit problematic. And here we go. We've got our big mamma jamma combined up and ready for Action. This thing's pretty big. I'll do some comparisons here in a little bit. We've got a big old combiner here that I quite like, except for the weird color differentiation of the one leg. Now, something that's been pointed out to folks over on social media is that this is um, Space Cobra Commander. I don't think that was intentional. The figure does have posability. Arms are posable via ratchets. And then there are elbows here on the elbows or on the, yeah, there, there are elbow joints, but they're super tight and very hard to move. So good luck with that. He doesn't really have any weapons that he can hold. And originally I thought the uh, big cannon or the big thing on the back was going to be a weapon, but no, it's just a booster. And uh, there you see my one major issue with the figure. His one leg keeps falling off. And that's actually because of a design flaw with the actual space shuttle, or maybe something broken here. There is supposed to be, or at least over on the other leg, there is a like a little ratchet inside the connector that holds it together and actually allows it to do ratcheting. But as you can see here, it's a smooth bore inside the space shuttle leg. It's not a huge deal, but it is something you should be aware of if you decide to pick up this set. Legs are poseable and can move, and then there are, well, sort of, there are knees, but there's a knee on one leg, but not on the other because of the way the individual figures transform. It's a little bit wonky doodle. But as you can see on this postcard, it looks like the one leg can bend, but hell if I could figure out how. All right, size comparison time. Commander Class Jetfire, Titan Class Predaking, Siege Prime, Legacy Leader the Fallen, Oversized Combiner Wars Abominus, HasLab Victory Saber with Stand, and finally the other Space Morphers space set. Specifically, it's the Satellite set there on the right. I mean, it's just massive compared to the other guy, and that guy's on a stand. He's an inch off the ground still. I hope I have shown you just how utterly massive this thing is. Overall, this set is a lot of fun. I really like it. It's not perfect, though. There are some issues with the combined mode. The lack of posability in the legs, the lack of posability in the shoulders, the fact that, well, the satellite's feet keep coming off and the hand just spins there freely as opposed to actually holding a pose. They are small problems, though, for a set that's just big and a ton of fun and not that expensive. It's definitely worth picking up if you can. There's a link down in the description for this set over at SirToys.com. I suggest you go over there and pick it up for yourself. Let me know what you think of the set down in the comments, folks. I had a ton of fun with this set and Really, I, I do like it quite a bit. In fact, I like both the space sets. They're both a ton of fun, but this one has that certain bigness to it that's just so cool, where the other one is just unique and fun. All right, folks, I have been Bo Matrix. I'll catch you all next time. See you around.